that experience I had is not something that I ever want to go through. I don't think I should be in a situation where my child is going to ask me, am I going to die today? Two days ago, we had a flooding. Um, I reached out to the Four Parts Police Station. They advised that, based on the situation, I have to call the Fire Brigade. I called the Maple Fire Brigade. Um, when I spoke to them, they said that they would dispatch a unit. They asked how long it would take. They said they are sure. I'm up. They're watching the water to see how close it was to coming in because it already reached. This step was covered, so it basically started to come in about this edge right here. Um, I called back. I explained to them that it's coming in the house, but it started to float because it started coming from both front and back at this point. So both the front and the back water started rushing at the same time. Water started coming in. I called them again. I explained to them I have a one-year-old baby with an eight-year-old. They're on the bed right now, but because the bed is moving, we can't stay one place and we're running out of space. If you can see the wall on the mark over there, how close it is to the window, you'll see the watermark as, as a line there to show how far the water was. Over the side over there, all the water, you couldn't see anything over there. The column there was covered, entirely covered. The vehicles were covered. I explained to the fire department that there's no way I could come out to walk in the water because it was taller than my eyes. They said that the unit is in traffic. Don't know with traffic call again like 45 minutes afterwards i was told they're still in traffic call again mommy called as well they said that crystal we're familiar with the situation with you and the kids we know and we're trying to send the vehicle there they're on their way but they're still in traffic when i realized the water was getting taller than i am now um i called them again and i said running out of space can't get in the aisle and i still have the kids what do i do the lady said to me um, you know, I have no friend you can call. I said no because their car couldn't come down here anyway. You don't have no neighbor, you don't have no family member, call somebody else. But at this point, at this point, you have got to try to save yourself because there's nothing else that we can do for you. Hung up, and that was it. I never heard from them again, nor the police. What well, started to come through the front door first, and then at the same time, I heard Red mention it's also coming through the back. So we're both surrounded from the front and the back now. So they were both coming at the same time. Um, start coming in. And of course, you know, this area will fill with water, then the passage area, then it started to come both front and back room. This is the room we're in. So you'll see some mark here. So this is the window I was looking to see how close or how high the water is, what was happening. So of course, because mesh is here, I had to close it so the water wouldn't come in. Up there, up on the closet top here, was where I had to put the documents and the eight-year-old had to put her here to sit when the bed started to move. So this is where we're trying to reach. Well, this room is partially clean now, but you'll see the watermarks basically covered here. You'll see here. So all the sockets were covered. Everything started to float. The stuff you see on the outside right now um, was from this room. Dollar school supplies. To make it easier for us, we had to sweep everything. So all the shoes, clothes, from all the dresser, the wardrobe, everything is out here. We had to put them in. I had that barrel filled with water, I had to empty it and put all the clothes in it, as I said before. Everything is wet. So all the shoes and everything. Most of the shoes started to float out before we even started to clean out. Um, because she had some shoes around here on the background, so everything floated out as well. When I realized the water start come through both front and back door, the water start reach up to my foot right here. So now, um, I had a little girl, Sidalia, and she didn't want to let me go none at all. As young as I see her, she can kind of understand what's going on, that it's danger around. So we realized that it's time to find a way upstairs, you know, when Crystal told me that you have nowhere else to go in and she start to feel cold because we, we, we was in the water for a good period of time and so only thing I had to do the job at the time was just a, a cutlass so I start chop from here and start chop 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 until I get this size hole for us all to go through the hole and because the access over here to go upstairs but that's the way we force ourselves to reach upstairs.
for safety until the water start run off because the rain was still falling we have to wait till the rain stop and then the water start run off and we don't feel like it's manageable to make our way back through and see if we can exit the building you know so we have to do what we have to do to save ourselves we sent through the uh, little one first the eight year old Maria we have to send her through and then we make Crystal try to go through it couldn't work because of the size hole and I'm thinking about to, to start with the cutlass again but it was running out of time then that's the time I went through took the baby from her all over again and I said Chrissy you have to try to push your head through or something you know and it didn't work so she put a leg through and start forcing I think piece of the same uh, board here scratch her leg and the fight and fight until she make it through and so we reach upstairs same thing out but even harder because you know at the time it's more dangerous so you have to try to find a way to go through so when we're coming back through after the storm come it was a problem for her to get out back when i made a call and i said i'm calling in relation to my daughter crystal campbell i was told yes we know about crystal and her situation i said what are you doing they said the vehicle is on its way no, I kept um, every minute communicating with her. And being a praying mother, I kept asking God to cover them, to guide them and to protect them. But for God's mercy and care, I don't know what would happen. It's way in the after seven that help came for them. This big truck came. It was sent by our landlord to assist her. I'm grateful for that. They took them and they came to Bell Plain. I live in Bell Plain. And that's where we met them at the entrance because the truck couldn't come down into where we live. So that is where they spent the night and that is where they spent last night. I live for my kids. I wouldn't put them at risk willingly. So it's one of those cases where I know it's a fun for them. I stay here just the same. We didn't know what to expect. The wall there, everything was covered. Everything, you couldn't see anything, nothing you couldn't see here. The unfinished house is right there, the veranda section they have, you couldn't see nothing there. So we just sat there, we didn't know what to expect, we didn't know how long before help would get there. The good thing is that the section downstairs that I show you, it wasn't concrete or else I wouldn't be talking to you today.